Hello, Facebook family. Hello, Resurrection family. Hello, Resurrection friends. Uh, all those that watch us on social media, just to give you a little heads up, we've been having issues with our broadcast through our streaming system, and we're working to get it rectified. That's why sometimes the volume, when they sing, goes in and out, you know. Uh, so, but I wanted to let everybody know that we're working on it to get it rectified. So be patient with us. Uh, if nothing else, I will always come back and supply a link later uh, from our broadcast so that you can always tune in later. But I know that many of you have been missing, missing us uh, on Sundays and even on Tuesdays. So I want to make sure that you get a hold of us when you, when you want to or know when we're coming on so you can watch us and that you can pray for us. Amen. We can't do it without you. We need you to. Uh, hello, Diane. How are you? God bless you, cuz. Amen. And we want to make sure that you are able to see our broadcast when we come on. Uh, we want to celebrate Christ with you. We want to make sure that you uh, stay in tune with what we're doing at the church. If you weren't there, we had our Women's Day on Sunday, which was outstanding. The ladies were, did a super job. Uh, we are working on some other things at the church. We're going to try to develop to give away turkeys. I asked them to supply me with uh, 75 to 100 turkeys. Yeah. I believe if you don't ask for what you want, you won't get what you want. So it seems like a lot, but uh, if you don't ask, then you'll never know. So we might not get 100, but I'm asking for 100. I want to take care of 100 families this, this Thanksgiving season so that people can have the hello. Denise, God bless you. Tell Jody I said hello, and we we'll continue praying for her. Amen. But we are, we are blessed here at Resurrection, and God is doing miraculous things for us, and we appreciate your support. Uh, we cannot do it without your support and your prayers and your blessings and your finances. Many of you send in donations and help us financially uh, so that we can stay on the air, so that we can stay vibrant and viable in this community, and we are looking to do even greater things for the community that we now serve. Amen. And uh, we, we thank God for all that he has done. A lot of people on my prayer list today. Uh, I'll get to that a little later, but I want to talk about it. I got a scripture for you. It's coming from Matthew 17, 15, Matthew 17, verses 15 through 17. And it says this, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And for a subject, just to give you a subject, hello, Gary, God bless you. How do you deal with crazy people? Now, if you're like me, you've had to deal with some crazy people in your life. You had to deal with some people that you just don't know where they're coming from and why, why they act the way they do, why they do the things that they do, why they say the things they do. So I want to help you to understand how to deal with crazy folk. Now, I got some of my family that's crazy. Some that you, I know you work with, Gary, you know we work with some folk that was crazy. Amen. Pastor Booz, I know, I know you know we work, we deal with some folks in our churches that are crazy. But how do you deal with people that are crazy? Have you ever had to deal with crazy people? Generally, we describe things that they that they do that don't make sense as crazy. When a person talks in a way that he does not make sense, we say that that person is talking crazy. When a person acts in a way that does not make sense, we say that the person is acting crazy. The same would apply to persons who drive crazy, write crazy, or otherwise perform out of the norm in a variety of ways. Usually we are quick to call others crazy. Very few people actually think of themselves as being crazy. We use nicer terms to describe ourselves as individualistic, idiocentric, eccentric, or a plethora of other terms. My wife tells me sometimes that I'm nosy. I tell her I'm just inquisitive. What seems crazy to others often makes perfect sense to us. The man who wears a raincoat on a sunshiny day does not consider himself crazy. Just cautious 
because the weather could change instantly. The late Howard Hughes kept himself shut away in a dark room without clothing, afraid of germs. People said he was a billionaire, but he was crazy. He said he was being cautious about contracting and spreading diseases. People who do crazy things rarely consider themselves crazy. In fact, most people that others think that others are crazy for not following their example. This text focuses on a man who brought his lunatic son for healing, and it shows Jesus' response. In biblical times, many of the diseases that we know today by a variety of names were characterized by either being of an evil or a lunatic. This was a case when a man came to Jesus asking for mercy for his son, who was often stricken with a spell that forced him to fall on the ground and sometimes fall into fire. The father described his son as lunatic. The word lunar describes something associated with the moon. The word lunatic comes from a Greek word, sela lia zomai, which means struck by the moon or moonstruck. It was believed that a mental disease that is caused by the moon afflicted this young man. They noticed that his attacks usually came whenever the moon was high and rarely otherwise. They quickly assumed that it was the moon that was causing his problem and dubbed him a lunatic. The disciples tried to cure the boy without success. Each time the moon rose, the boy's fits returned and he fell into the fire. Thus the father approached Jesus with the problem. He wanted Jesus to stop the moon from attacking his son. Jesus' answer to the father was simple. Bring him hither to me. Jesus rebuked the devils and he left the man and never returned to the man. Bring him hither to me. The father tried all everything, but Jesus said, bring him hither to me. In the presence of Jesus, the man's good mind was restored. That's the solution to dealing with the crazy woman or man you see in the mirror every day. Jesus says, come to me. Jesus can do the one thing that doctors, analysts, and counselors can't do. He can forgive sin. The presence of evil caused the boy to act crazy. Jesus went to the root of the problem. Today, Jesus offers that same invitation to those dealing with similar issues that are driving them crazy. He says, come unto me, all ye that burden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Is there a life troubled by personal issues? Bring him hither to me. Is there a life that seems so out of control that is acting really crazy? Bring him hither to me. And those that you run across every day, you take them to Jesus and say, Lord, help them. And the craziness may leave you alone. Yeah. Finally, my brothers and sisters, the only way to deal with crazy, a crazy world that is filled with crazy people doing crazy things is to keep our eyes on Jesus. We live in a crazy world where on one side people strap bombs around themselves for a cause and on the other side they dose themselves with lighter fluid for no cause. We live in a crazy world that prays for peace and prepares for war. We live in a crazy world that praises the beauty of every color but lives in black and white. The only way to deal with crazy, a crazy world is to have what others may call a crazy faith that makes a whole lot of sense. David danced nearly naked. It was crazy, but considering the blessing he enjoyed to him, it made a whole lot of sense. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended, folks thought believers were crazy and drunk. However, they were not crazy. They were in the presence of God that made a whole lot of sense. It may seem crazy to praise God when you're sick. But since God is able to heal the sick, it's not crazy. It makes a whole lot of sense. It may seem crazy to praise God when you don't have any money in your pocket, but since the word of God delivers that, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, then praising God makes a whole lot of sense. It may seem crazy to praise God when a loved one has died, but since Jesus has promised us life after death with him in heaven, then praising God makes a whole lot of sense. It may seem crazy, but believers are able to smile in the midst of their troubles. 
Believers are able to smile and sing praises to God in the midst of this storm. Believers are able to shout and say, thank you, Jesus, in the midst of the pain. Believers are able to give God glory in the midst of their trouble. Believers are able to say, Lord, I love you, even when they're going through stuff in their family. And stand firm in the midst of strong winds because God is still on the throne. It may seem crazy, but it makes a whole lot of sense. It may seem crazy, but faith in God takes an ugly situation and makes it beautiful. Faith in God finds strength in the middle of weakness, success in the middle of failure, peace in the middle of confusion, joy in the midst of sadness, comfort in the midst of loneliness. When this father found that an evil spirit had overtaken his son, he set on a journey to find Jesus. He had tried the disciples, and, and no doubt the philosophers, doctors, and counselors had failed too, but he came up with the crazy idea. If I can just find Jesus, everything will be all right. Some people call it crazy. But I found out, and we found out, that when everything seems at its worst, there's always hope. If you can just find Jesus. If there are storms raging in your life, just find Jesus. When you find Jesus, he'll take care of your misery and turn it into delight. He'll take your sadness and turn it into joy. He'll take your pain and turn it into gain. He'll take your cross and replace it with a crown. Others may call you crazy, but call on Jesus. He'll pick you up and turn you around. Place your feet on solid ground. Call on Jesus. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He died on Calvary and rose the third day morning. The reality is, and I said it Sunday, the more you praise God, the more God blesses you. And I don't care what storm you're in. I don't care what pain you're going through. I don't care how your body is getting weaker. I don't care if you have sickness in your family. I don't care whatever is going on in your life. Go to Jesus. Follow Jesus. Chase after Jesus, just like this man did. Some folk can't help you, but Jesus can. Your family may not be able to help you, but Jesus can. Go to Jesus and follow Jesus and trust in Jesus, and he will get you through your personal, private storm. Amen? Amen. That's my word for today. And Tasha, good to see you on. I miss you. Praying for you. Sister Jones, continue praying for you and my good friend, Reverend Jones. Amen. And that God continue to bless you and him. Amen. And all the good for, thank you for watching. Amen. Uh, I want to start out with, I got a phone call right before I came in. I haven't even talked to them yet, but he left me a voicemail. The gentleman uh, called me and uh, his wife called me. Uh, I went to visit him in the hospital last week and uh, went there to pray for him and lay hands on him. He's, he's, he's gone on now. God has called him home. And uh, uh, Arthur, and I'm trying to think of his last name, and I can't right now. I, I'm having a, uh, a mind block. Uh, but he was, he was a guy that was at Scott High School when I was there. Yeah, but I'm praying for uh, Arthur and Sister Sherry, praying for you. Amen. And I'll call you right after we get off the broadcast to see exactly what you wanted. Uh, I'm going to pray for Sister Diane Hunter. Amen. And uh, and God touch her body and heal her. And uh, Sister Elaine and her daughter Branda. Amen. Praying for all of you. Praying for Barry and Gloria Brown. Uh, Deacon Cardell Mallet. we pray that you see this. Sister Shirley Thompson. Praying for her, her brother Felix Campbell, who lost his wife and I believe it was today. He lost his wife today, and that sister Shirley Johnson's brother and her sister-in-law passed away. So we're praying for their family, praying for you, Sister Thompson, praying that God cover you, give you comfort, and he speaks to you even now in during your loss. Praying for my wife and her sister, Sister Ruthie. They lost their aunt that lives in Grand Rapids, and I believe the, the services are gonna be Friday. We will be traveling there Friday, for the service, we asking you to pray for them and reach out to them and, and, and that God speaks to them and give them comfort in their loss. Uh, Arlene Robinson, LaShonda Fuller-Homan, Mother Annie Derrico, 
uh, Rose Robinson, Janita Hopings, Manzetta Jackson, Jenna Family, Tabitha Hatfield, Tamila Smith, Fredika Ware, uh, Linda Jones and Reverend Jones, who we've already talked about, Sister Bowie, Vernon Membry, Pat and Michelle, Rita and Ronnie Baltazar, Kathy Cornett, Tina and Mother Betty Jones, Dorothy Gray, Natasha Kelly and her family, LaVon Foster of Cleveland, Donna Knight, Barbara Nix, Rena Martin, Jenna Collins, Marsha Madison, Lee Madison, uh, Dana Hunter, Brett Hunter, Bonita Hunter, Juanita Madison, Rosemont, Juanita, praying for you. And I told uh, Brother Madison, Deacon Madison, if you need me to come where you are, we will come and we will pray for you wherever you are if you cannot make it to the sanctuary. Gwen Jones, Teresa Brown, Sharon Lee, uh, Pastor Shanks, Kevin and Flint, Shirley Thompson's daughter, Renita Taylor, Mother Aline Harris, Helen Bird, Jimmy Williams, Deacon Herb Flowers, Elaine Branda, uh, Eddie and Reuben Burks, Tyrone Patrick, Corliss Crowder, Vonda Hodges, Deacon Eddie Nash, Pastor Strong, uh, Deacon James Buckingham and his wife Isla Jean, Janetta Smith, Sister Shirley McCaster, my mom, Mother Marilyn Lomas, Sharon Hall, Alicia Davis, Darnell Moody, Charlotte Robinson, Mother Zingram, Harris, Glover, Thompson, Lomas, and Mays, Mother O.C. Ballard, Sonny Elwes, Joe Simmons, uh, Paula Hicks Hudson, please, please check on Paula Hicks Hudson, support her, Tamika Buckingham, Tareva Taylor, Dashi Jaden, Kimberly Rochelle, Jennifer Close, Deb Ramsey, Reverend Earl and Wanda Buckingham, Lorenzo Buckingham, and his wife Stephanie, Diane, Susie, Byron, Wycliffe, uh, Nikita Ball, Deacon Archie Lewis, uh, Deacon Charles and Deborah Gibbon, Reverend Leo Walton, Corrine Wheeler, Henrietta Taylor, Aunt Molly, Raymond Corrigans, Hazel Bester, Dwayne Hammond, Sister Lucinda Sharp, Carmen Morgan, Bruce Watson, Violet Terry, Dana Marcus Pickett, Denise Perkey, Jody Lambert Solis, Rick Zikafus, Pastor Bill Russell and family, James Dickerson, Keisha Bowen, Dorothy Brewer, uh, TJ, Tish, Marvin, Faith, and Armani, my children, my grandchildren, Doris and Terry, Neil, Tanya Smith, Tequila Church, Patricia Garrett. There's someone I missed. Blame it on my head and not my heart. And if you want me to add you to the list, inbox me on Facebook uh, or text me and let me know and I will add you to the list. Uh, and we'll make sure that God blesses you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for how you're moving. We thank you for how you're blessing. We thank you for how your anointing covers those that believe in you. I ask, oh God, that you reach out to the Miller family. That's Arthur Miller and his wife, Sherry, during, his, during the loss of Brother Arthur. That you go to the family, that you touch them, oh God, that you aid them in their grieving. You touch, hallelujah, Sister Ruthie and my wife, Wanda, in the loss of their aunt. That you touch them, oh God. Touch the whole entire family, those that live in Grand Rapids, oh God. Get them comfort only the way that you can. I know that you can speak and somebody can feel your anointing. I know you can speak and somebody can feel better about this situation. I know you can speak and somebody will know that you're in a room. I know you can speak, Father, and whisper in their ear and let them know they can get through this trying time. I ask that you do it right now, God. Do it, do it your way and your will. And let them know that you're there every step of the way, that you're holding on to their hand, that you, you heard their cry. And you pity their every groan. And Father, with every name that I've called tonight, I ask that you, Father, answer their prayer. I don't know what everybody needs today, God. I don't know what everybody's calling on you for today, God. I don't know, Father, what they need in their family's life. But I know that you've already heard. I know that you know all about this situation because you know us individually and you know us collectively. You know every hair on our head and you know about every breath that we take. I ask, oh God, that you send your power and you breathe on them right now. That you send your anointing, that you breathe a fresh anointing on them right now. That you send your power and your angels to them right now. That you supply every need right now. That you fill every void right now. That you lift them up, Father, to know that they're going to make it. That it's not as bad as it seems, that the trouble don't last always and storms do pass over and that you're already getting ready to wave your hand and say, peace be still. Yes. Wave your hand today, God. Thank you, Lord. 
Touch Sister Roma. Touch her right now. Touch her body right now. She may be ready to give up, oh God, but don't let her give up. Let her keep trusting in you. Don't let anybody give up and allow them to keep trusting in you. Knowing that you still have the last word. That you still have control over everything that goes on in our life. That you still, Father, can heal our bodies. Even at the last minute. I ask you to move today, touch today, speak today. Encourage today, lift up today. Let somebody know that their prayers are not in vain. That their tears have not gone unnoticed. That their moans and their groans, Father, you've heard them all. And that you pitied every groan. And that you're willing to wipe their tears away. And give them a new hope of restoration, a new hope of believing, a new hope of their, their future, oh God. Knowing that you're still getting ready to work a miracle in their life. I declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you perform a miracle today. I declare and decree, oh God, with your power that you have, that you move a miracle right now to those that are watching right now. I declare and decree, oh God, that you have the power, that you use your power to open up doors right now. I declare and declare and claim victory tonight for those that need you to move on their behalf right now. I declare it. I decree it. I rebuke the devil for whatever he's trying to do. We remove his covering. We re renew, remove with everything he's trying to do. We remove it and rebuke it and send it away in the name of Jesus. Devil, you can't live here anymore. Jesus. Devil, you can't control my children anymore. Jesus. Devil, you can't control the people on my job anymore. Jesus. Devil, you can't control my mind anymore. You can't control my heart anymore. I want you, Dad, I want you to remove it all. Yes. Give people peace of mind. Give people hope in you. Give people knowing that you still have power all in your hands. All Hold us in the hollow of your hand, God. Cover us with your blood. Give us your favor. Give us your anointing. So that we can proclaim, proclaim victory in your name. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing in this place. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing in this broadcast. I thank you, Lord, because I know that somebody's watching right now that you're going to do something special just for them. I, I believe it. I can feel it in my spirit that you're getting ready to work a miracle in somebody's life tomorrow just because they watch this broadcast. You're getting ready to move some stuff out of the way. You're going to open up some doors. You're getting, re getting ready to give somebody a financial blessing tomorrow just because they believe and they trust in you. I ask that you do it, God. I know that you're going to do it and I proclaim it and I I know and I see victory today. Yeah, victory. <coughs> In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you hear this cry. Thank you. Hear this plea and answer this prayer. Not for me, oh God, but for those that have called on your name tonight. Those that have been listed on my sheet tonight. You do it for them, God. And I pray that when you move on their behalf, They'll stand wherever they are, raise their hands, and say, Lord, I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for how you opened up the door. I thank you for how I got the new house now. I thank you because that car that was broken down, you've now got it fixed up now, and I got a new vehicle. I thank you for watching over my children now, and my son is now coming to listen about who you are. Someone's going to do that tomorrow, God, and give you glory. And we proclaim it, we decree it in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And everyone say amen. 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 And thank God. Yes. I thank God. Because I know he's getting ready to do something special. I thank God because I believe exactly what he said. That he would take care of his people. And never let them go wanting for anything. So I ask you right now to continue trusting in God. And when you get across crazy folk, and we all see them, just go to Jesus. Pray for them, and then pray for yourself that God give you strength and comfort to deal with crazy situations. Amen, because we all run across them. I thank you for watching. Again, like I started out, we, we've been having some issues on Sunday with our broadcast. We're 
Facebook's been muting some of our music and singing, but we are in the process of working. And Paula, God bless you, praying for you. I know I gotta watch what I say, but I pray that everybody, I want y'all to know this, Paula Hicks Hudson watches this broadcast. She comes to my church, she blesses us, and she's saved and she has an anointing over her life. Yes. If I was to vote for anybody, and I'm not saying you tell you who to vote for, but if I was to vote for anybody, I would vote for somebody who I know, who I knew, knew God. Yes. And God was a controlling force over their decisions and over their life. Yes. So I can't tell you who to vote for, but I tell you, uh, Paula Hicks Hudson washes and she loves the Lord and she will praise God right here in the middle of everybody yes. and not be shy about it. Hallelujah. So we praise God for you today. Thank you for watching. If you think somebody needs to see this video to be uh, encouraged, to be blessed, and share this video with your family, with your friends, let them see and let them hear how God can bless them. Amen. Prayerfully, we see you on Sunday. Uh, like I said, if, uh, if this doesn't, if the broadcast doesn't work through Facebook, I will send you a link that you can click on that it can take you to our live broadcast. We're working the process of getting things figured out. So pray for us as we do. The devil is not going to win. We win over the devil. Yeah. He's not going to stop what God's plan is. We win. Yeah. And so trust us and we'll continue to prayerfully bless you. Have a blessed evening tonight. God bless you.